All right. Hi, everybody. It's Brian again. Just a, a, a few short things for this, for this week's module. <clears throat> we're still doing linear regression, but now we're going to look at some hypothesis testing issues. Um, there's not a lot more that we need to learn how to do in StatCrunch, but I'll just show you some more uh, stuff from the statistical output. So what we're going to continue to see problems like this. We have a data set here, x variables and y variables paired together. I'm going to open this data in StatCrunch. We're going to do a little bit of um, a little bit of analysis in there. All right. So as we've done many times before, we're going to do a linear regression, a simple linear regression, since we only have x and y, x, y, and just click compute. Now we're going to look at this in a slightly different way now. Um, well, we're going to not we're not going to just look at this at the output at the top but we're going to go down to the parameter estimates so throughout all of statistics you know we're trying to do inference about parameters that we can't see but we know are there right like we don't know the population mean we it's it's just something we can estimate uh, well if if there is a linear relationship between the x and the y then there is a slope and there is an intercept. We call those beta zero for the intercept and beta one for the slope. Okay, so that's what the betas are. They represent the true values that actually exist out there in the universe. They're fixed, but we don't know them. From data though, we can estimate them and we estimate with B zero and B one. We use English letters as our statistics to approximate or estimate the Greek letters, which are the parameters. So, uh, but the, the, the numbers are the same. The intercept is going to be the B0. So that's negative 3.581 and the slope 2.25 rounded up, 2.56. The standard error is going to be also given our output. The standard error is <clears throat> uh, an estimate for the standard deviation of the error term, which is what there's some something uh, something that we're not capturing in our uh, model. If our model was perfect, we wouldn't have any uh, we wouldn't have any um, difference between our line of best fit and the uh, and the actual data points. But there is some sort of error. It could be measuring error. It could be uh, other factors that aren't in our model. Whatever it is, um, we can estimate the standard deviation of that error. And that is the error standard deviation, standard error. That's what it's called, 1.3753. I'm just going to copy it right over to my answers. If the residuals are normally distributed, so the standard error of beta one, well, or sorry, the standard error of B1, for each of these estimates, we're given a standard error right next to it. So for the slope, the standard error is right here. I'm just gonna copy, oh, it's 0.33, but I have to round it up to 0.332 to get three, three decimal places. The standard error is what we're asked for. When I say S with a little subscript B1, remember B1 is the slope, so the standard error of B1 is that number. Check it out. Um, now, assuming the residuals are normally distributed, test that the null hypothesis of beta 1 equals 0 versus the alternative beta 1 not equal to 0. So in this statistical output, you're given standard estimate, standard error, as well as um, this other stuff. This alternative is specifically this. If you were to ask a make form a hypothesis test and say, okay, for the null hypothesis, let's say this slope, let's say it's zero, which is like saying there is no linear relationship between x and y. It's just x doesn't have any any real bearing on the y value. Um, that's what a zero slope would mean. And the alternative is that, no, this, the, the slope is not zero. It's some number that's not zero. Um, that's what this alternative means. And then the, it, get, it do, does the hypothesis test 
by which I mean it calculates a t-statistic and it gives a p-value. And so that's that p-value for the test is right here. Three decimal places is very easy, 0 0.007, right? I round it up to 0 0.007. So what would that p-value mean? That's a really low p-value. It's less than 0 0.05. It's less than almost anything, right? It's very, very, very small. We would reject the null hypothesis. There is sufficient evidence to conclude that a linear relationship does exist. That's what rejecting the null hypothesis means for linear regression. We're rejecting the hypothesis that there is no linear relationship. Okay, so once again, we got some data. Pediatrician wants to determine the relation that may exist between a child's height and head circumference. She randomly selects five children, measures their height uh, and head circumference. Okay, so we've got height and head. Let's open this in StatCrunch. And we'll do another linear regression. We're going to um, pull up the regression menu for simple linear. We're going to be using height x to predict y. And again, we're going to just compute standard output. We're going to, again, have for each of the parameters for our beta 0, the intercept, our estimate is 10.92. I'm going to copy four decimal places, but I'm going to have to round it up. So 10.9242. And then for the slope, again, taking four decimal places, this I do not round up. So I'm just going to paste it and be done with that. Great. Standard error. The standard error, again, is standard error is up here. I'm going to take four decimal places for the standard error, which actually is just 0 0.07. Assuming normal probability plot, um, the standard error of B1, that's given right here, the standard error of B1, which is our uh, slope, 0.0. 0332, paste it over. Okay, so now a normal probability plot suggests that the residuals are normally distributed. Test whether a linear relationship uh, relation exists between height and head circumference at alpha 0 0.01. So the null hypothesis would be that the slope is zero, which is to say beta one equals zero. The alternative is beta one does not equal zero. That's what we want to run. The null is beta one equals zero, alternative beta one not equal to zero. Remember, beta one is the slope. If the slope is zero, that means doesn't matter what value x is, y is not going to be affected. Okay, and what's the p-value for the test? Remember, the p-value for the test is given in our statistical output. Um, three decimal places is 0 0.005, which is which is small and smaller than my alpha, or the alpha it says is 0 0.01. So we do reject an H naught. Conclude there is a linear relationship between the child's head and height, uh, head circumference. Yuppers. Okay, now let's do a confidence interval for the slope and. Uh, uh, the slope coefficient, <clears throat> slope estimate. Let's go back to our options for our output. Or, and uh, if you scroll down, you'll see, actually, you don't have to scroll. You can either perform a hypothesis test or you can perform a, um, make a confidence interval. I'm going to create confidence interval at a level of 0.95 and click compute. You see my output is a little bit different now. Uh, in this section, instead of having an alternative and a p-value and a t-stat, I've got lower limits and upper limits for confidence intervals. Well, that's what I want. Um, I'm doing a confidence interval for the slope, uh, which is going to be uh, with three decimal places, 0.134, but I have to round it up to 0.135. And the upper limit, I'll just copy it exactly like that, 0.346. Okay, great.
Suppose the child has a height of 26.5, what would a good guess for the child's head circumference be? We're going to use our model to predict. And to do that, we go to Options and Edit. We can scroll down a little bit, and here we have Prediction of Y. You can plug in a value for X. This is a height of 26.5, and we're going to just click Compute. And it's going to, in addition to all the other output now, it's going to give us, if you scroll down, do, 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 predicted value for the predicted value of two point uh, of for x value of 26.5 we had a predicted y of 17.296 two decimal places okay 17.29 that rounds up to 17.3 17.30 not necessary but for good measure let's type it in great All right, fun. So now we're going to see what it means to do multiple linear regression. Multiple linear regression refers to having multiple x values. All right, so we've got x1 and x2. So we can do it just as we were doing before, pretty much, except we're going to not use simple linear regression in StatCrunch, but we're going to use multiple linear regression. So what we have, we have y is the wind chill, x1 is the temperature, and x2 is the wind speed. So under the stat menu, under regression, we're, I'm going to go down to multiple linear regression. This is just going to allow me to select multiple x values. In fact, it actually allows for, oh, the y variable, yeah. I'm, y is my y variable, and I have to hold down shift to select both x variables. Interactions are optional. We're not covering interactions in this course, um, so just ignore that for now. And uh, that looks like it. I'm just going to click Compute, and I will get my model. So this is giving me uh, the same kind of output as I normally would get. I get uh, intercept x1, and uh, so I get my intercept term and my coefficient. So I'm going to copy the intercept term over. So um, let's, uh, what, three decimal places? I can do that. The slope for the x1, the coefficient, we should call it, 1.334, and the in coefficient for x2, negative. 0.414. I don't have to round anything up because uh, of the fourth decimal place isn't bigger, isn't five or more. So great. So that's my model. So now let's let's try to see what what we can do. Draw a residual plot to assess adequacy of the model. Create the residual plot for air temperature. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to edit, and I'm going to uh, look at the options. I'm going to do, uh, I'm, I can't uh, just click something to plot the residuals versus air temperature from here. What I'm going to do is click here to save the residuals. What that will do uh, is, you will see, I'm going to actually close this right here. I've got residuals in a new column. Now I can take residuals and plot them against either of my x values. So I'm asked to plot residual values versus the air temperature. Air temperature is x1. OK, so I'm going to graph a scatter plot. x is going to be x1, my air temperature. And the y variable here is residuals. And I'm going to compute. And look at what I get. Look at that. So. I can see um, I've got the zero line. Let's, oh, I think I can draw. I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw a straight line. Beautiful. I'm going to draw the axes. Oh, cool. So, <laughs> um, so. That's cool. I got. I can look at this compared to the um, the scatter plots. I can see it looks a little bit like. Um, well, I'd say the closest one is D. Let's zoom in and take a closer look. Yeah, look at that picture. We've got um, 
we've got those things very close to the x-axis, those points down here, we've got these points up there. I think I'm I'm hiding one. Yep, that, that point's there. Okay, super. So that's my residual plot. Now I'm going to plot my residuals. Let's go to options and edit this. I'm going to plot, instead of x1, my air temperature against residual, I'm going to do x2, my wind speed against residuals. And I'm going to plot it. Um, in fact, I'm going to actually make it even closer. I'm going to go, I'm going to make the y-axis go from um, negative 10 to 10. It's just fun. I'm going to make the x-axis go from, looks like we're going from 0 to 120. And let's draw that line again. The line that's going across from 0. And uh, compare that. Well, now look at this. We can see this shape. We see a swooping shape, right? That matches what we have in choice D. This kind of swooping curve. That is actually uh, a bit of a red flag. When we have that shape, that indicates that um, there is a. This is a. Dis, this is what we would call a discernible pattern. The residuals against the um, air temperature looked fine, but for wind speed, it looked like. Uh, there was, there was a, um, I mean, this, this curve indicates that uh, a linear, there isn't a linear relationship with wind speed. It's perhaps uh, maybe a relationship with wind speed, with like the square of wind speed or something like that. So I would say that um, there is a discernible pattern. So a linear model is not appropriate, inappropriate. That's the conclusion you need to make.